Well, next up, it is a pleasure to welcome our friend Robbie Robertson to the studio. Good morning. Top of the morning to you, Mr. Bentley. <laughs> How are you, sir? I'm very good, thanks. Good to see you. Of course, every time I run into you, I always say the door is open. We've got to get you down here to the studio. So at long last, yeah. you are here. We've been working on it. <laughs> and with a new album. So that's uh, really the, the occasion. Um, this is How to Become Clairvoyant. And it is your first record in quite some time. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, I got off that treadmill a long time ago of making a record, doing a tour, making a record, doing a tour. It's not my uh, schedule anymore. So I didn't know whether I was ever going to make a record again, actually. And and I enjoy a lot of the other things that I've been doing. So well, Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, when we say that, um, that it's been however many years since your last album, it suggests that you haven't been making music or working in music for that long but that that's not the case you are busy with um film work and all sorts of projects but tell us what you have been up to well in the middle of making this record um martin scorsese called me and asked me to help figure out the music for shutter island and uh and this is the first time that he's uh that he's ever called with this kind of confusion in mind he usually has a clue of some kind of a starting place for us on these films this time he said i have no idea what to do it's a different kind of material see if you got any ideas and when i read the script i immediately thought of modern classical composers and i said i think that we should just use a bunch of geniuses of uh, brilliant composers all modern classical music and then he asked me to send him an example of what I was talking about. I did. He called me laughing and said, I, th I, I think you've nailed it. <laughs> so I started out knowing something about modern classical music. By the time I was done with this project, I was an expert in it. So I love those things where you learn and grow and, you know, get to explore things that you never would have normally. Your relationship with Martin Scorsese goes back uh, many years to uh, The Last Waltz. Uh, you have a real connection with him. Tell us about your, your relationship with Scorsese. Well, we first worked together on The Last Waltz, and then when he was doing Raging Bull, because at that time of The Last Waltz, we were, we were housemates for a period of time. And uh, and during that period, he would show me lots of movies that I never had, had seen or thought of before. And I'm a bit of a m movie buff. And I would play him lots of music that he'd never heard of. It was kind of a trade-off we had. And, and then in Raging Bull, some of that music that I had played for him, he wanted to use it in the movie. And then he asked me if I would do the source music for the movie, and then he asked me to help figure out some of the things with the Mascani music that we we needed to fix, and uh, and the power of the music on the movie, and the movie on the music in that, is when I first got addicted to uh, music and movies. Mm -hmm. It was just. I, it was just an amazing experience, and a great Raging Bull is a great place to start. 